Hi, it's Sherry. Welcome back to my channel, Canterbury Cottage. Today I'm going to be making over seven of the thrift haul finds that I brought home with me from my recent trip to St. Louis. If you want to see the final projects up close and staged in my home, be sure to watch the last couple minutes of the video. Well, let's get started. Well, I bet you're surprised that I bought this sad little brass lantern. To start, I took it apart and threw the bottom plastic pieces away. I didn't need the candle cup, so I removed it too. I decided to create a new base with these lamp pieces. You'll see the lamp later in the video. I was going to paint it white, but went with this light green shade instead. Chalk paint covers brass and other metals really nicely. After the paint was dry, I assembled all of the pieces using E6000 glue. I really like the look of white wax over light shades of paint, especially green and blue. I thought a tin can might imitate the look of a lamp post, and I found one that fit perfectly into the base. I used a different adhesive, but I should have used E6000. To disguise the appearance of the tin can, I found a number image online and printed it out. To adhere it, I applied Mod Podge to the can and to the paper. A final coat seals and protects it. I decided to make a nest from angel hair vine to put in the lantern. It is really just a process of shaping it and using florist wire to hold the shape in place. You could easily just buy a little nest at any craft store and skip this step. I wired the nest to one of the little posts to hold it in place. I hot glued some sheet moss to fill in the middle of the nest. And then I added some Spanish moss to give it a more natural look. I cut some flowers off of an old candle ring to add to the top of the lantern. I twisted them together with a little florist wire and then went around the stems with some florist tape. I added a bow and then used some more florist wire to attach it to the top of the lantern. I had a little butterfly with a metal ring on it, so I used some clear thread, much like fishing wire, to attach the butterfly inside the lantern. I ran the thread through the little hook and then hot glued the ends of the thread to the underside of the roof. I also glued some flowers and bird eggs to the nest. This little shelf only cost $2. I decided to play it safe and paint it white because white seems to sell best in my retail booth. I distressed it using 220 grit sandpaper and then I applied a coat of clear wax to seal and protect the chalk paint. Because the drawer was embossed with the word seeds, I decided to leave it the natural wood color, but I freshened it up with some watered down antique wax. This helped to hide the scratches. The drawer front was coming loose, so I tightened it up with a little dab of wood glue. I replaced the knob with a solid wood one and then painted it white so that the stained drawer would blend in with the white cabinet. I usually cover up cut out hearts, but on this cabinet I thought that detailing actually looked sweet. Do you remember this $3 candlestick? To repair the chip, I purchased this Loctite repair putty for just under $4 at Menards. You slice off a small piece and then knead it in your hands until it turns a consistent color. 
just mold it as needed to repair any cracks or chips in breakable items. It dries rock hard in just a few hours. And then you can sand it smooth. I mixed some pumpkin colored chalk paint with some cheap brown acrylic paint that I had to create a terracotta color that I liked. I used three separate coats of the terracotta paint on the puttied repair spot and then I dry brushed the other areas to help that spot blend in better. I made another nest using the angel hair vine to sit on top of the candlestick. I used burlap backed sheet moss from Dollar Tree to create a level bottom for the nest. I embellished the nest with Spanish moss, some more flowers from the candle ring, some bird eggs, and another little pink butterfly that I had. I always keep an eye out for nice wood frames at the thrift store, and this one was especially cute with the beaded trim. I decided to paint it black to coordinate with what I was planning on putting inside the frame. I used a short bristled brush to get in between the cracks of the beads. I printed out an image of a lamb that I liked, and then I cut a page out of a hymnal. I centered the hymn over the lamb image and taped it down I then ran it through my printer so that the lamb printed on the center of the hymnal page. I distressed the frame to emphasize the beading and then I went over it with an antiquing wax. The dark wax really gives some depth to the black paint. It probably wasn't necessary but I added a coat of paste wax for extra protection. Because the stand on the frame was broken, I drilled a hole on the back of the frame and then cut a small piece of dowel rod to hammer into that hole. This creates an easy and removable stand. I love metal decor that is made to look like plants or flowers. Using a short bristled brush, I applied two separate coats of chalk paint to the candlestick. Once the paint was dry, I distressed it using 100 grit sandpaper. I then sealed it using clear wax. I made another nest using the angel hair vine. This time I hot glued it inside the candle cup. I filled the center of the nest with some Spanish moss and then I hot glued on a little bird. I also added some little floral and greenery scraps. I love everything to do with birds and so I think this is cuter than just sticking a candle in it. Originally I was just going to refinish the wood on this $4 Lazy Susan. But then I thought it might make a nice tabletop for this old wood lamp I had. I started by cutting off the cord and then I removed the large bolt on the underside and just continued to remove things to gut the entire lamp. There were two holes in the base of the lamp that I filled with the Loctite putty the putty dry for a few hours. I painted the lamp with two separate coats of white chalk paint. I used my orbital sander to sand down the putty patches on the base and then painted it with two coats of the white chalk paint. I found a dowel rod that I could sand down a bit to fit into the hole at the base of the lamp. I put a little bit of construction adhesive on it and then hammered it in place. I used a handsaw to cut off the excess dowel rod. 
I drilled a pilot hole for a screw. I then applied some construction adhesive and reattached the brass base of the lamp, including the concrete insert that you find in the base of many lamps. I distressed the lamp using a medium grit sandpaper and then I applied a paste wax to seal and protect the chalk paint. I removed the base of the Lazy Susan and saved it for another project. Using my orbital sander, I sanded the top piece down to the bare wood. Like I had done on the bottom of the lamp, I filled the hole on the top with a piece of dowel rod, intending to screw the Lazy Susan to the top. But instead, I decided just to use wood glue to attach the two pieces together. I weighted it down and let it dry overnight. I applied a coat of paste wax and then decided it might look better with a little bit of antiquing wax. I wiped the majority of it off, leaving just a little bit behind. To prevent water rings, I sealed the top Lazy Susan with a water-based polyurethane. Well, I have to admit that I thought this candle lamp was pretty ugly, but I also thought that it would be a really easy upcycle. First, I removed the rather sad-looking fake flowers, and then I cleaned it up really well. I painted the brass pot with two coats of white chalk paint. I lightly distressed and sealed the pot with paste wax. I added two Dollar Tree succulents, and then I filled in the rest of the pot with just little scraps that I had left over from other floral arrangements. I just play around with the plants until I get a look that I like. Don't be afraid to take out a plant if it's not working. Vary the heights as you go and just keep rearranging until you're happy with it. Hot glue some sheet moss to fill in between the plants so that you can't see any of the foam. I'm not sure I like the pot painted white, but I do think the succulents turned out cute. I didn't get to everything, so you'll have to tune in next Tuesday to see what I do with those green canisters. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video and were inspired to recreate some of the projects for yourself. Before I sign off today, I want to tell everyone thank you. Thank you for watching and subscribing and for leaving such very nice comments. When I started this channel, I thought that maybe in a year or two, I might have 1,000 subscribers. I would never, ever have believed that I would reach that number in just six weeks. I'm shocked and I'm overwhelmed and I am so very appreciative. So thank you all. Thank you. Until next Tuesday.
Bye-bye for now. Thank you.